I was wondering if maybe you can provide some, you know, higher level intuition about um, what uh, S4 does better than these other sequence models when it comes to like learning. Is it just, you know, not forgetting things? Is it able to remember more complex things? What is it? I guess it's, it's a bit hard to define what learning more complex things means. Um, certainly like the way it's constructed, it is constructed to not forget things. So I think that the types of data where it would do best on are sort of like sequences where you need to be constantly like looking back and you need information about a lot of context at every single time step. If you're making a prediction every time step or doing something and you just need lots of context. Um, I think that's where S4 particularly excels at. Um, there's a bunch of other, so compared to other sequence models, there's a bunch of other um, properties that S4 has, I think that makes it attractive because, because of its multiple representations. Um, and some of these were hinted at in the presentation, like because it's continuous, it really seems to do better at continuous data than other models. Um, so the, for the examples I gave in the beginning with the like uh, ECG, EEG data and speech and so on, those seem like particular domains where S4, uh, compared to the baselines we've seen, S4 seems to have a lot of promise at doing better there um, because it's modeling a continuous process and it's using this theory that allows it to capture a lot of context. Um, yeah, there are other properties that make it nice, but they may, might be kind of more on the computational aspect. Um, I don't know if, yeah, I mean, it's not like a, you know, like a, it's not like a free lunch. It's not just gonna be better than everything else, but it it has been generally good on most things we've seen. There might be some trade-offs compared to other models. Um, like I mentioned on discrete data or in shorter data, perhaps transformers are better. Um, there might be some types of data where CNNs are more efficient at least. Um, perhaps also do better. Um, we have, in terms of what we've observed empirically, we have seen S4 generally seems competitive with RNNs and CNNs across the board. Um, there may be, there are areas where transformers seem to be doing better right now, but S4 is still pretty good. Um, but yeah, in terms of the actual, where, where it excels, it really just comes down to the theory. It's a continuous model, it's good on continuous data, and it's good when you need a lot of context. Perfect. That's exactly the kind of answer I was looking for. Thanks. I think Albert, you could also potentially test some of some of these hypotheses to a certain extent, right? You could create some um, synthetic data sets that maybe you know you can test for how long the dependency uh, for how long you can remember something, right? Or for how many things can you remember after a certain amount of time, or for how complex in terms of like you know the power of the polynomial, for instance. Um, the something that you generated uh, at the beginning of, of, is then then being able to be reproduced later on. So I think that you could have a way to quantify that to a certain extent, right? Yeah, that's a great idea. I think we we considered um, incorporating some of these on the, our most recent paper as well. Um, we ended up not for space reasons and time reasons, I guess. Um, but we are actually still interested in kind of a more um, controlled evaluation of how much it can memorize and uh, what dependencies it can handle compared to other models. Um, on the preliminary things we've seen, it it does, I think, do as it claims and really handles these long things well. Uh, but certainly, like a more controlled setting, I think would be a nice comparison point at some point.